Originally constructed by the Navy in 1942 in support of the war, the facility was named Naval Auxiliary Air Station Chincoteague. The field quickly became known as Chinko by the sailors stationed here. The air station was manned by many, including VT-51 pilot Ensign George Herbert Walker Bush in November 1943. After World War II, the facility became the Navy Aviation Ordnance Test Station. In 1959, NASA acquired Naval Auxiliary Air Station Chincoteague and has operated the facility as such to this day. The eastern shore in the 40s is different, certainly, than it is now. There was one large metal, uh, I mean, uh, hangar there that was shared by VX-2 and VU-4. Uh, the airplanes that we had, the drones, one was a TD-2C. It was a little plywood uh, aircraft fixed uh, propeller. Uh, you could get a pilot in there, but when they turned that thing into a NOLO, the no live operator, they put a fuel tank in that guy in that seat. And the others were the F6F drones. They were all painted red. We also had some TBMs that were control planes. Uh, we did get a couple of F8Fs in. Uh, we did have a F7F, which was a twin engine tricycle. All the others were uh, tail draggers. Uh, we used to get aircraft coming up there uh, for FCLPs then. In 2013, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center entered into an agreement with the United States Navy to support field carrier landing practice operations for E-2 and C-2 aircraft operating from Naval Station Norfolk Chambers Field. The E-2 Hawkeye is a high-wing, all-weather, carrier and shore-based airborne early warning command and control aircraft that is utilized to aid the carrier strike group in air-to-air -air intercepts, air-to-ground strike control, airborne battlefield command and control, airspace management, and search and rescue. The E-2 is easily recognizable by the large round radar dome on top, the four vertical stabilizers mounted to the horizontal stabilizer, and the distinctive humming sound made while flying. The C-2A Greyhound is a high-wing, carrier and shore-based logistical aircraft, also known as the COD, which stands for Carrier Onboard Delivery. The C-2 is a cargo aircraft designed to deliver mail, personnel, and parts to and from the aircraft carrier. The aircraft is distinguishable due to the large, wide body, and dual turboprop engines. The C-2 looks a lot like the E-2 without the radar on top. Due to the high level of skill required to land an aircraft on a moving aircraft carrier flight deck, Field Carrier Landing Practice, or FCLP, is an important phase of flight training. It precedes carrier landing operations and simulates the conditions encountered during day or night carrier landings in a controlled environment. Field Carrier Landing Practice, or FCLP, is conducted using a racetrack pattern one to one and a half miles wide and at 600 feet above ground level during the downwind leg. It is crucial to the success of carrier aviation that field carrier landing practice be conducted during both day and nighttime conditions. There can be anywhere from one to five aircraft in the pattern at a time. FCLPs are flown under the supervision of a Landing Signal Officer, or LSO, affectionately known as PADLES. Since the beginning of carrier aviation, the LSO has been used for the safe recovery of aircraft landing on the aircraft carrier. The LSO has the direct responsibility for training pilots in day and night carrier landing techniques. Through experience and training, the LSO correlates factors of weather, wind, aircraft performance, and pilot capabilities to perform optimum control and assistance in aircraft landings. In the early years of carrier aviation, the LSOs would utilize handheld colored flags, cloth paddles, and lighted wands 
and later an optical landing system utilizing mirrors, as signals to aircraft landing aboard the aircraft carrier. It wasn't until 1970 when the Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System, or FLOLS, was introduced to carrier aviation, improving the hardware and functionality of this very useful landing aid. In 2004, the FLOLS was replaced by the Improved Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System, or iFLOLS. Improvements to the iFLOLS consist of more light cells, giving the pilot an accurate sense of where he or she is on the glide path. The iFLOLS displays glide path and trend information to a pilot approaching the landing area. The display is visible at a range of one nautical mile, and the displays for both the shore-based and shipboard systems are identical. Today, the primary visual landing aid on board an aircraft carrier is the improved Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System. During field carrier landing practice, the landing signal officer operates from a workstation which houses the radios, weather equipment, and controls for the visual landing aids that are required for field carrier landing practice. The culmination of field carrier landing practice is the successful landing on board an aircraft carrier. Considered one of the most challenging flight maneuvers for a pilot of a fixed-wing aircraft, especially at night, the success of landing on a carrier is directly related to the quality of training received during field carrier landing practice. As any naval aviator would attest, it is no easy task to land on a runway that is 790 feet long, 80 feet wide, moving away from you at an angle, and is pitching up and down. At the heart of naval aviation is the ability to land a moving aircraft on a moving ship. FCLP training provides the means to safely achieve this critical skill.